Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on what time you're watching this video. My name is Becky Ngoma. I am a filmmaker based uh, in Zambia. Today I'm here to discuss the opportunities that are there in the film industry. Okay? And amongst these opportunities, I'm going to talk about um, entrepreneurial opportunities for people like uh, producers or production houses. I'll talk about entrepreneurial opportunities. I will also talk about uh, employment opportunities. I will talk about skills development opportunities. And lastly, I will share about how to get to those opportunities. But at this moment, I'm gonna give you, uh, I'm gonna give you a short moment for you to organize your paper and your pen uh, so that you can take down notes. The key areas of opportunity in the film industry, it, um, you can't put it under one umbrella, so I broke it into two angles, okay? Because opportunity is multidimensional. It's multidimensional, there's local opportunities, international opportunities. And then also because the film industry has different players and we are all looking for different types of opportunities. Actors are looking for different opportunities. Producers are looking for different types of opportunities. Upcoming filmmakers are looking for different types of opportunities. Established filmmakers are looking for different types of opportunities. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on dividing these opportunities into two, the local opportunities as well as the, um, the international opportunities, okay? So under that subject, I'm going to talk about entrepreneurial opportunities for independent producers, okay? So in this aspect, I'm talking about film grants, distribution, commissions and co-productions. And um, I'm also going to talk about uh, employment opportunities. Underemployment opportunities, I'm talking to crew, cast, vendors, and other service providers in the film industry. And then I'm also going to tackle skills development. We all know a factional industry needs uh, human capital. It needs people that are skilled enough to produce quality and high standard products, okay? So we are going to talk about uh, skills development, and in skills development, we are going to talk about uh, formal as well as informal training platforms. Bring it down to entrepreneurial approaches, okay? Entrepreneurial approach in um, opportunities hunting, okay? I was talking about film grants. So basically, producers, um, either independent producers without production houses, as well as producers that own production houses, and are producing, the one thing that is always a, a hiccup in producing is funding. Funding is a big, big problem. So the question here is, where do I find, where do I find the money to produce that killer film that I want to produce? So another angle where you can find opportunities is to look for film grants. We are living in the 21st century. This is a, an information technology era, okay? So film grants, you're going to find them online. I'm just going to mention a few, uh, a few film grants that you can look for. There's the Hubert Bowes Fund, It for Better Fund, Hot Dogs for Documentary Filmmakers, uh, World Cinema Fund, ETC. And if you want to look for more grants, you can go online and just, um, just Google film grants. It's going to bring you different segments of uh, film grants across the world, international film grants, and then also film grants that are just for Africa. So you can just go online and search for more areas in which you can find those grants. What else are we looking for? We are looking, as, as, as producers, we are looking for, uh, when we're looking for finance, we're looking for commissions. Well, um, who are the people that are commi co uh, commissioning? We have private firms and NGOs who also give film commissions via bids, okay? In Zambia, we had a project called Love Games, which was um, commissioned by, um, uh, which was commissioned by an American uh, organization, NGO. And then um, we also have studios as well as broadcasters that actually uh, commission products. Zambezi Magic is one of them. Uh, there's Netflix, there's ZNBC and other, and other uh, smaller production um, studios within the country, as well as um, other studios across Africa and across the world. So don't limit yourself. Go online and research, okay? Away from uh, opportunities, I'm gonna talk about um, licensing and distribution, okay? 
of course, you've made your product. You want to make your money. You want to distribute your product so that you can bring back your capital. Where do you go? You are looking for distribution opportunities. You are looking for licensing uh, opportunities. Um, when it comes to licensing, we have our local uh, licensing uh, studios, the same ones I talked about, Zambezi Magic, ZNBC, Netflix also, uh, internationally, Netflix also does licensing. But apart from that, we also have other players uh, for documentary film like A24, Aya Films, Video Vision Entertainment, and directly here with uh, Multi Choice, you have Showmax, you have Zambezi Magic, you have Honey TV for reality TV shows, okay? So all these people have websites. You can go online and check their websites. And you will always see when they put out a call for content that they want to license. Okay? And then we have uh, local agents. We also have local agents that are working with other distribution companies uh, where, you can, um, where you can take your content and they act as middlemen. They connect you to their market of, uh, of, of different buyers. And some of these buyers, you will find them even online, okay? So some of the local agents that I know of, uh, there might be some that I do not know of, that I know of is um, Sotambe Film Festivals. Sotambe Film Festivals, they, they, they also do uh, distribution. They work with different um, content, um, content buyers, content buyers across Africa. So they do, uh, they do content sourcing for those uh, players. And uh, independently, I also know of Owas Ray Mwape, as well as Rafael Nirenda, who are also middlemen uh, for different content buyers. But I'm not saying get yourself limited to that. You can still go online and just Google and check for who is looking to buy content, okay? And another opportunity that is there for entrepreneurial ventures is also co-productions. What are co-productions? -produ Co-production is where we come into a partnership. We come into a partnership. Two players come into a partnership to produce one project because one partner probably cannot, um, cannot bear all the costs of, uh, of production, okay? So you bring a partner on board who you share the burden with, okay? So co-production co basically are joint ventures, okay? And uh, these joint ventures can be done locally. It can be one production house and another production house coming into a joint venture to produce one project and they they share the, the budget, they share the burden of the budget, or it can be an international co-production where a Zambian production house and a Kenyan production house, they come together to produce one thing. So the advantages that are there, like especially in international co-productions, is that some of the funds or grants, film grants that you might want to apply for, uh, that you might want to apply for, for might have those conditions. And sometimes, uh, sometimes um, a grant is not released to a certain region. You'll find that maybe like uh, as at present what I have observed is that uh, East Africa is getting a lot of uh, film grants to which Southern Africa is not eligible. But you might, have, uh, you might have something that is suitable for that film grant. Why not partner with a, why not partner with a, uh, a Kenyan company who are eligible and they source that fund and you work together in a, in a, in a co-production, okay? So the beauty about co-productions is that they broaden the market in terms of finance, audience, as well as attracting funds. Some funding organizations, they want their funding to, um, they want when they give funding, it goes to create a larger impact. So when they give to three or four production houses doing one project, it means the funding has been cast wider. The impact base has been cast wider as opposed to just giving it to one production house, okay? And then there's also um, talent hubs. There's talent hubs, writing residences, and fellowships, okay? So hubs, uh, fellowships, and writing residences, they come in with two types of opportunities. One, networking. They offer net a networking platform. Two, they also offer a skills development platform. And three, also access to funding, okay? So sometimes you are a writer, and it's hard for you to uh, find a way in which you can shape your skills as well as find uh, opportunities or access to, to funding as well as, um, uh, as well as shaping up your script for, uh, for, the, for the market, the standard, uh, according to the standards that the market wants. Such opportunities like uh, talent, uh, talent hubs, writing residencies and fellowships, they offer you such opportunities. So examples of that that I can give, um, Realness Writers Residence, you can find it online, Locano Film Hub, 
And then we have uh, Deben International Talent Campus, of which I was a beneficiary myself. Uh, we have Bellinale Talent Campus, um, which um, uh, two filmmakers that I know locally have been, um, have been um, uh, they've been beneficiaries of the Bellinale Talent Campus, Jesse Chisi and, um, and Catherine Kaseketi. Um, also, Sotambe Film Festival also offers a writing, uh, a writing, uh, a writing hub for upcoming um, writers. Multi-Choice Talent Factory is also doing that annually. We also have Young Cinema, we also have Young Cinema Zambia, which is also uh, giving those types of uh, opportunities. So what is it that you get out of these opportunities? Is, um, it's easier to access development fund. It also gives you exposure to funders and also gives you an opportunity for skills development. Let's look at it practically. Is, um, Multi-Choice has been training for three years, they have a talent hub, okay? These ones that I'm mentioning, the hubs, residences, they are fully sponsored. They are fully sponsored uh, packages, okay? So multi-choice, number one, is um, when you go there as a talent, you are not spending anything. And then number two, um, these are the benefits, is you have access to a development fund. Multi-choice talent factory students every year, um, they come up with a project which is fully funded because they're in a hub. And then uh, number two is exposure. Exposure to funders as well as exposure to the market. Because talent hubs are connected to a larger frame of the film business, they connect the, they connect the talent to that larger community. So all those are benefits of looking out for such opportunities. Skills development. Multi-choice every year after their talents graduate, they graduate with a film, they already graduate with a product, which is they are working into the, uh, into the film industry with a CV already, like uh, something to track them, to track them what have they done. And then number two, they work out with uh, various skills and ready for the market to start uh, earning a living, okay? And then the other, uh, the other opportunity is in competitions and awards. I know a lot of people don't like to enter um, their work. It might be script competitions, it might be film competitions um, and awards. Uh, sometimes people feel lazy to submit to such uh, platforms, but such platforms offer a lot in terms of networking, sometimes access to meet a funder for your next project, and also exposure to other markets and other opportunities. So what it is about competition is Competitions is you upgrade your profile as a filmmaker. If you're a filmmaker that submitted something to the Afri Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards, here's what comes with it is that being a nominee, even just being a nominee, it goes on your CV. And when that goes on your CV, when you are applying either for a job, for a crewing job, or you are applying for funding for a, for a project, that is going to go on your on your CV and it will reflect well on your, on your profile as a, as, a, as a filmmaker, okay? It's great publicity for you and also it connects you to more opportunities. Recently we had the AMVCAs in which uh, we had young uh, filmmakers uh, that, uh, that, went, uh, that went there whose uh, projects were selected, they were nominated. But uh, I had a chat with one of the people who went there um, Cosmas Ngandwe, who is popularly known as Logic. And being on that platform, he was able to network. He was able to network and he was able to meet um, other producers and he was able to sell some of the content, some of the things that he's working on, some of the projects, okay? So competitions and awards will offer you such platforms. You can't do that if you're not, get not getting yourself out there and submitting your works into competitions and awards. So some of the examples that I'll give you that have these competitions, note that these are the only ones you can still go online and check for some more. Uh, there's Sotambe, Sotambe, uh, Sotambe Film Festival in the Copper Belt has a writing, um, they have a writing competition which, in which you enter, in which you can enter. Netflix, Netflix also has such uh, writers' uh, competitions. Recently they had, um, the Wasis are reviving the African folklore competition in which one of our own filmmakers, uh, Sam Kanyama, was selected, and that opportunity has opened other, other doors for him. Um, in terms of our skills development, he was able to upgrade his already existing skills. He's been opened up to, um, to other networks where he can, um, 
he can source uh, he can source the different needs that he would need to enhance his career in film. Okay, and then we also have uh, film festival award entries um, internationally. One example I'm going to give you is uh, Paul Willow, who's won multiple awards, um, and his talent has been able to get recognized and winning those multi awards because he was entering his work. He was entering his work in these competitions, in these awarding, awarding systems. And, um, and it's, opened, it's opened him up to other opportunities uh, within, the film, uh, within, the, within the film business, okay? Uh, another opportunity is uh, digital media, which is a fast growing uh, sector, okay? And now I even hear uh, they even had a segment for it at the... Um, AMVCS, so it tells you how relevant and how, yeah, and how needed and, and, how, and how fast the world is tapping into digital media, okay? So what are the advantages with uh, digital media, the opportunities it will present is um, it's easier to reach a wide audience, okay, with dig digital distribution. You can put your content on YouTube, you can put your content on Instagram, you can put your content on um, even personally, um, personally, uh, what's this, um, you can have an app, a personal app developed where you put your own content. We have uh, Zizwa Plus. We have Kazadi with uh, Zizwa Plus where he's putting his content uh, on, uh, on Zizwa TV, okay? And the advantage of digital media is low cost of production. TikTok is becoming the main entertainment uh, nowadays. We have TikTok, we have uh, Instagram, uh, just to mention a few. And um, to learn more about digital media because it's the new... It is the new door. It is the new sector. It is the new, it is the new actually thing happening. It's the main thing happening in, uh, in the industry of media. So for me to start talking about digital media, it's a whole broad uh, subject. So I'm just going to ask you, uh, just to learn more about it, I'm just going to give you a site. You can go to cinema, cinema8.com, and learn more about digital media, especially for upcoming filmmakers. This is a very good... Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good opportunity for you because uh, the cost of production is low, the cost of distribution is low, and you also tap into many other opportunities because this is, a med uh, this is a form of media where you can film with your phone. You can film with your phone, you can distribute with your phone, you can do everything using your phone and still be able to make money. We are now moving on from entrepreneurial opportunities and we are now looking into skills development opportunities, okay? You might be an upcoming, uh, an upcoming or aspiring uh, filmmaker, an aspiring writer, an aspiring editor, an aspiring, um, an aspiring cinematographer, or you might actually already be in the middle of your career but you're still looking at enhancing the skills that you already have. So what sort of opportunities are there for you? The opportunities are found in uh, talent hubs. I already spoke about talent hubs when I gave an example of Multi-Choice Talent Factory, which is uh, a training hub. I, talk about, I spoke about uh, Sotambe, which is also another Sotambe Film Festival, which is also another hub. I also spoke about uh, Bellinale talent, uh, uh, talent Campus, as well as uh, Deben International Film Talent Campus. Um, but we still have others locally. There's the Yoweli Chungu Films, which is uh, another, uh, another place where you can shape your talent. We have um, CK Casting Agency, who facilitate a lot of work workshops on, um, on, 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 acting, on, on, on acting for those people who are upcoming actors and looking to get integrated into the film industry. Please orient yourself with um, such uh, agencies as well as the OAS Mwape casting agency. Um, uh, and also, we also have like a lot of training workshops across the country for skills development. In Livingston, we have a Shungunam Titima Film Festival, which facilitates a lot of our workshops in, uh, in, in film skills. In Lusaka, we have the Lusaka Film Festival. We have the uh, Young Cinema Zambia. We have, uh, in Kitwe, we have the Sotambe Film Festival, and then we also have other filmmakers. We also have other filmmakers who are well-established, 
who are a hub of knowledge and who facilitate these different uh, film workshops. We have somebody like uh, Big Rob, uh, Big Rob, uh, a very experienced filmmaker who is also facilitating uh, trainings. Um, we have uh, uh, Lawrence Thompson, who is also another, another um, experienced filmmaker who is facilitating different uh, trainings at his, uh, 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 on, his, uh, on his platform. So all these are opportunities that you can uh, take advantage of in uh, skills uh, development. But there's also online. Uh, there's also online film classes, okay? So you can go online. Facebook has a lot of online film classes that they advertise. And they're usually free, okay? All you have to do is just sign up. And then you can attend the class from, from your phone. I mean, there's Zoom. There's Zoom, there's Teams, there's all these... Um, um, there are all these uh, apps that make these things accessible for us. There's also trainings that are organized locally. Some people will organize a, a film training via a WhatsApp group where they discuss uh, a certain aspect of, uh, of filmmaking. All those are informal training platforms, but your skills are getting enhanced, okay? And there's also YouTube tutorials, guys. We are living in the 21st century. YouTube is full of, uh, it's, it's full of knowledge. There's a lot of film uh, tutorials. You can just go on YouTube. You just type in a field that you're interested in. But one, um, one channel that I would love to highly, highly recommend is Film Courage. Film Courage is one of them that I would love to recommend. You're looking to enhance your skills. You can go to Film Courage, but you can also go to other platforms. Even Shonda Rhimes has a platform on YouTube where she facilitates different classes for upcoming uh, writers, as well as established writers who are looking to enhance to enhance their skills. Uh, on Facebook, we have Netflix. Uh, Netflix is currently actually uh, signing up for people who are interested in um, series writing, serial writing, uh, serial writing, how to package a series, how to, uh, how to, how to enter into the serial writing, um, uh, serial writing uh, genre and how you can package for international, for international, um, uh, commis uh, commissioning uh, agencies, okay? So all that is knowledge that is vital. Sign up and upgrade your skills. We also have uh, mentors within the industry. I know a lot of people that are mentoring within uh, uh, the film industry. Lawrence Thompson does mentorship at his uh, company. I know Owas Raymwape does uh, mentorship. I myself, I do mentorship under Young Cinema Zambia with Jesse Chisi. And um, there are a lot, of, uh, a, lot, a lot of mentors, I can't bring all their names here, but a lot of established filmmakers are already doing this mentorship. The beauty with mentorship is that uh, the mentor is sort of like a, a stepping stone to help, you, um, to help you connect to opportunities, to help you connect to the market. Remember, they are already in the mainstream of, uh, they are already in the mainstream of the industry. So they have access to opportunities that you might not hear of easily. So they become your stepping stone. And also, they have experience. They'll help you learn the do's and the don'ts. They'll help you, uh, they'll help you how, to, how to climb the ropes of the industry to get to where you want to get with your career. So don't shy away from mentorship. Ask people to mentor you, okay? And then there's also books. Reading, reading, reading. I know uh, sometimes we have excuses like uh, you can't find... Uh, film books on our market. We have Amazon. There's, a, uh, there's film books on Amazon. You can, you, can buy, you can buy a book on Amazon. You can buy a book on eBay. But you can also download. There are also free e-books on, on filmmaking, which you can actually download. And there's also people within the film industry that already have these books. You can borrow a book and, and, and read, uh, learn something new, and you keep enhancing your, your skills. Okay, so we spoke about um, entrepreneurial opportunities in the film industry. We also spoke about uh, skills development opportunities. And now we are moving on to employment opportunities. So we have a lot of people that are looking for jobs, for crewing jobs uh, within the industry. You might be an, ed an editor looking for a job as a crew member. You might be a gaffer looking for a job as a crew member. You might be an actor looking for a job as a, uh, looking for a job to be casted in a, in, a, in, a, in a film production or in a series production. Okay, so um, employment opportunities. 
where do you find these employment opportunities if you are that person, okay? So where you get these opportunities is production houses. Production houses are the ones who are in the business of producing content. And when they're producing content, of course, they're looking to crew and to cast. And uh, the key players that I'm going to speak about is uh, Zambezi Magic. Zambezi Magic commissions um, uh, various uh, production houses. And these production houses, they always put out calls for content. And Zambezi Magic always announces these calls. They, always they also announce these uh, opportunities on their platforms, on Facebook, on Twitter, on, um, on, uh, on, on Instagram, and also on the channel itself on Zambezi Magic. They will advertise that they're casting for this show, for a new coming show, or they're crewing for a new coming show. So when you see such adverts, turn up. Those are opportunities. ZNBC, our own uh, national broadcaster, is also doing the same thing. They'll put out calls for crews. They'll put out calls for casting. Um, also, there's also other players, Movie TV, Diamond TV, and also just independent production houses that are filming content that is not even coming on these uh, broadcasting platforms. They put out calls. You'll find calls on Facebook. You'll find calls on, uh, on Twitter. And sometimes these calls, uh, um, these opportunities will circulate within um, WhatsApp groups, okay? So always be part, of a be part of the community so that you never miss out on uh, such important uh, opportunities. Where else will you find employment opportunities, okay? Film associations and societies, okay? You cannot be part of a system when you're outside the system, okay? So join associations, join film associations, join film societies, because sometimes when opportunities come, they travel through these platforms. And if you're not part of these platforms, important opportunities, employment opportunities, will buy, they'll bypass you. So we have a lot of, uh, we have uh, a number of, locally, locally we have a number of uh, film societies. We have uh, the Film Guild, we have uh, National Association of Media Arts, we have uh, ladies in arts, we have, uh, yeah, we have ladies in arts and we have uh, um, seeker casting agencies. We have all these um, uh, smaller groups that are associations and they happen to get this information quicker than you would at a personal level. So when you're part of this community, employment opportunities will get you and sometimes even recommendations because you're part of a community that is aware of the things that you can do and that community uh, in that community, people might be connected to an opportunity that befits you. And because you're part of the community and they know what you do, they'll, give, uh, they'll be able to let you know. So on the international market, there is, um, there is a, a website called uh, Stage 32. Stage 32 is a large, large platform in which you can, um, uh, a large platform for the film community. It means um, this is a platform where you can uh, put your profile and the entire world is able to see you. Hollywood can see you, Bollywood can see you, Nollywood can see you. It's a large film community, okay? And so it's easier for people to access you. And sometimes you will even get, um, when there's a job opportunity internationally, you will, get, um, you will get a notification. You will get a notification, why? Because you're part of that community, okay? And then there's also the Africa film producers, uh, Africa film producers uh, community. Um, of which I am a part of, and of which I have been a, uh, a beneficiary. I, I, I got uh, my last job to write, for, to write for, for Nollywood. I got the contact via, uh, I was identified via Africa Film Producers as a, as, 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 a, as a society. So be part of these societies. It expands your territory. It expands your access to opportunities, okay? And then there's also, Employment opportunities, you can also find employment opportunities via creating your own online content. Produce your own stuff, upload it on, on YouTube, put it on Facebook, and then you have, uh, you, 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 you get eyeballs, you get people who subscribe, people who come to watch your content, and uh, YouTube gets to pay you, Facebook gets to pay you, or advertisers, uh, uh, people, with, uh, people with products to promote, advertisers will come to you and use your platform to advertise and pay you. So that's another employment uh, opportunity. One practical example I'll give you is Kazadi. David Kazadi is doing it, uh, Kazadi Films, with the Divorce Club, which is on Facebook, and he's making his money. He's making his money. Um, he uses Facebook as well as uh, Zizwa Plus. He will draw his audience from Facebook, but they'll go to subscribe to Zizwa Plus, and he's making his money, and he's, 
Yeah, and he's getting his, uh, he's also getting his money through advertisement. Why? Because it's great content, and it doesn't matter how, um, and it doesn't matter how uh, what the platform is. It's just make great content. Employ yourself, and make your money, and use such platforms. Another way in which you get employment opportunities is recruitment platforms or recruitment agencies. Okay, in Hollywood, actors work via agencies. In Nollywood and South Africa. Actors, writers have agencies that represent them, that look for business for them, okay? So in Zambia, we are slowly developing towards that, okay? Um, sometimes some of these shows, on, uh, on, 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 even on uh, Zambezi Magic, they'll cast via casting agencies, okay? It's another way of integrating the industry. It's another way of integrating the industry and, and promoting growth of the, of the industry. Okay, so be part of these uh, agencies in order for you to, uh, in order for you to, to get noticed, in order for you to get access to opportunities. And also, these agencies, they do advertise these opportunities, okay? Stage 32 always advertises opportunities as an international um, platform. CK Casting, I always see a lot of opportunities within the CK casting platform. I follow them on Facebook, I follow them on Twitter, and I, see, I, I always see who is employing, who is crewing, who is casting, okay? And then there's also um, OWASP Casting Agency, I mentioned it. There's also LinkedIn, okay? Upload your profile on, on LinkedIn. Put your, 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 your profile on LinkedIn, because sometimes jobs will find you via LinkedIn, okay? There's also Jobs Zambia. Jobs Zambia always advertise. I've seen also like uh, lately since last year, I've been seeing uh, media jobs popping up on, uh, on, on Jobs Zambia. So all these recruitment platforms as well as agencies are also an opportunity. Don't limit yourself. Uh, broaden your sphere. Broaden, uh, broaden your access points. Okay, we have spoken about uh, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial opportunities. We've spoken about skills development opportunities. We've spoken, we are just from talking about uh, employment opportunities. And now we are going to answer the big question. Now, the big question is how to get to those opportunities. And that's what I'm going to be talking about, how to get to those opportunities. How do you get to those opportunities? Number one. Personal network, okay? Build a personal network. You cannot grow in isolation, okay? And then when I say build a personal network, how do you build that personal network? Attend film activities. You hear there's a film premiere? Go to that film premiere. That's where filmmakers are found. That's where like-minded people are found. That's where people who are connecting you to the next opportunity are found. That's where people who need to know what you do are found, okay? Create your personal network. Most work and funds are announced through word of mouth, okay? Sometimes somebody will mention to me, I'll meet somebody who will tell me, oh, I'm crewing for my new show. Uh, if you are in my network and that opportunity befits you, I will let you know about it, okay? So build a personal network. People share information to their own personal network. The more people you know, the more jobs and funding opportunities you will hear about, Okay? I've had to get jobs, like various jobs that I have gotten were through my own personal network. I know Blah, and Blah knows Blah, who is looking for a person who's got uh, a person with skills like mine. And through word of mouth, I am recommended. And why am I recommended? Because the person who recommended me, the person who's told me about the opportunity, is in my network. So you need to work towards building your personal network. So be in the film network, attend, uh, attend uh, film premieres. Go to any platform where you see filmmakers, artists meeting. Be part of the community and you start building your own network. And sometimes networks uh, are built through training uh, opportunities. You hear of a workshop, you're going to go to that workshop and from that workshop, you create your own, uh, your own network. Um, I'm, I'm, I like giving uh, practical examples. I had a, I had a job three months ago, of which the person who recommended me was a person who was, um, 
who is also an, an alumni of Deben International Film Festival because we met there, she became my network. She knew a company that was, uh, was coming to Zambia and they needed a local writer. And because she was my network and she knew them personally, she mentioned my name. That was my personal network. So this is how powerful a network is. Build your own personal network, okay? Another way, uh, how do you get to those opportunities? You can get to those opportunities by being part of online groups and forums, okay? This to my WhatsApp groups, there are a lot of WhatsApp groups. There's this filmmakers WhatsApp group. Oh, there's a NAMA group. Oh, there's a WhatsApp group for CK Casting Agency. Oh, there's a WhatsApp group for OAS, uh, OAS Mape Casting. There's a WhatsApp group for Zambia Film Guild. Be part of those WhatsApp groups. Be part of those forums. Either, even if the forum is on Facebook, I know Sotambe has a forum on Facebook in which a lot of people are members. Um, even via Google search, you can also go via Google search and um, look for funding and distribution opportunities which are announced via such platforms, okay? So when Netflix has an opportunity, you'll find Sotambe has posted it. You will find this forum has posted it. You will find this forum has posted it. So the more forums you are connected to, that news is bound to reach you. That opportunity is bound to reach you, okay? You will never grow in isolation. Be part of the network, okay? Again, how do you, how to get to those opportunities? How do you get to those opportunities? The big question. Another way you can get to those opportunities is make your own film, okay? Make your own film, and your own film will be your CV. Your own film will do the talking for you, okay? Um, so when you make your own film, it's going to create for you a good portfolio. And that portfolio becomes, um, uh, as, uh, especially for independent filmmakers, uh, you make a great film. Your film becomes your portfolio. And that film is going to get watched by other people. And some people will employ you by virtue of seeing what you did. Okay? They'll say, I'm looking for a director. And they will have seen your film, and they like the way you directed your film. And they'll get word round, I'm trying to get the contact for the person who directed uh, Maria Cristo. And because you directed Maria Cristo, and they like what you did with that feature film, they'll reach you. Sometimes your own work will speak for you, OK? So make your own film. So I'm not saying when I say make your own film, I know it's expensive to make a film. I'm not saying make a film like you need to go all big budget. You can make actually films that have um, films that will help you to build your career is start with short films. OK, you can do a short film. You might not even make money from it, but just upload it, submit it to festivals, upload it on YouTube and everything. It becomes your reference point of view. And people will come across your content and they might hire you because they came across your one minute short film and they were able to see your, your skills. Okay. Um, also, another way how to get to opportunity is volunteer. Okay. Volunteer. And this is something that is happening not just in the film industry, but also across other sectors. Okay. Across other sectors. When you are a newbie, people want to hire people that have experience. And so if you're a newbie, sometimes it's hard. To get, yourself, um, to get yourself an opportunity. Uh, an opportunity maybe um, was this, uh, it, uh, to, to take a job. Or sometimes to even have access to other things that you need as a filmmaker. But being a volunteer puts you in a, um, in a place of advantage, OK? Because everybody, everybody appreciates free labor, OK? So use that to your advantage. So how, how being a volunteer is going to help you is it's going to help you with uh, building your CV. If you go, for example, to Mpali, you go to Mpali, you talk to Frank Sibuku, like, I want to be a volunteer. You might not actually even be a beginner filmmaker. You might be quite established, but maybe you don't have so much on your CV. You go to Mpali as a volunteer. But once you work on that production, it goes on your profile that you've worked on on Pali. So it's going to upgrade your, it's going to build your CV. And also you're going to have hands-on experience. Because as you are working on that set, you are developing your skills. Okay? You are developing your skills and you're also establishing yourself through your credit. And at the same time, you're also building your network. You go to Pali, by the time you're leaving Pali, 
How many people do you know? You know Frank Sibuku, you know the actors on Pali, you know Pauline, the producer of Mbali, you know a lot of people, they are your network. And guess what? They also know your skill. So they might hear of another job, they might hear of another job that befits your skills, they'll recommend you, okay? Why? The only way you got to meet those people is through volunteering. So don't shy away from volunteering. Sometimes do volunteering, it will open you up to the market. Another way, how do you get to opportunities? Another way is to, um, to intern, okay? So intern, I'm gonna separate it from volunteering, okay? Cause an intern, uh, sometimes interns are paid. That's why I've put internship on its own, okay? Interning is what leads to jobs most of the time, not just in the film industry, but in other sectors as well, okay? So this can lead to a full-time job. It allows you to learn and gain experience. Interns also have a better chance of securing a job because you are already on the job. If I go as an intern on a, on a production, of course, maybe I might be an int uh, a paid intern, but of course we know that uh, the payment for interns, the, the fee is very minimal because you're interning, of course. You are building yourself. And then um, when there's an opening for a job and that opening befits your skills, you are definitely the first person they are going to think of, okay? So do intern, and I've seen it sometimes, some people have skills and they think, no, I can't go and intern, I'm, I'm, I, I, I have my skills together, okay? Don't, don't be proud, go and intern, and then let the people experience your skills. Once they experience your skills as an intern, when there's an opening, you are the first person they are going to think of, okay? Um, how do you get to opportunities? Another way you get to opportunities is reach out locally, okay? Reach out locally. When I say reach out locally, I mean sometimes um, platforms will come to you, especially local platforms. That's why I said reach out locally. Sometimes we look at these uh, small, small local platforms. We, we, we look down on them, okay? We look down on such uh, platforms, but the platform as might look small, even if it might look small, it might offer a connection to bigger opportunities as well as an opportunity to gain vast experience, okay? It might be an upcoming filmmaker who has not even done anything in the film, and then they tell you, ah, come and help me, you do this on my set. And then because the platform looks tiny to you, you will say, I don't want to get involved unless if it was this big filmmaker who had, uh, who had uh, reached out, uh, who had asked me to come on their, on their project. So reach out even on, if, uh, I mean, reach out local even on small, small production, you know? Small opportunities sometimes can lead to, to bigger, bigger opportunities, okay? Uh, what is another way to get to those opportunities that you need is uh, get experience on set. Get experience. In the film industry, it does not matter if you are a good cinematographer, you're a good editor, as long as there's no work to speak for you, as long as there's no product to show, it's very hard for somebody to hire you, okay? So getting experience is another way in which you can, um, you can connect yourself to, to opportunities, okay? Because sometimes, uh, most, most times a person will tell you, oh, I know how to do this, and literally what they know is they have knowledge in theory. And then when it comes to uh, bringing the practical aspect of the knowledge, they felt to perform. And producers will shy away from, uh, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from such people. So do get your experience on set. And I already spoke of other ways in which you can get experience if somebody doesn't employ you. Volunteer, intern, okay? So get experience on set so that you're just not a theory filmmaker. Interactions will get your name mentioned to another production or the same production may hire you on a bigger project. Because sometimes we've seen producers starting with a small, small project. And then next they get a bigger project. They'll remember you and they'll call you onto the bigger project, okay? Um, how to get to opportunities. Another way you get to opportunities is Use online job sites. I already spoke about this when I was talking about employment opportunities. Okay, you can go for job, you can use job search engines, okay? LinkedIn, Stage 32, Talent Manager, The Unit List, Talent Factory, uh, Talent Factory Portal. Talent Factory has a portal in which you can upload, you can actually upload your profile. You put your name there, things you have done, 
you put it on, uh, on Mautichu Stalin factory, and that's the first go-to place when um, Zambezi Magic production, uh, commission production houses are producing. That's the go-to area where, where they'll look for fresh talent. So, yeah, so put yourself up there. Africa Film, uh, Africa Film Producers Profile is also another platform in which you can reach those opportunities. Another way you can get to those opportunities is get non-film jobs, okay? I'm going to speak from my own experience of getting a non-film. Sometimes you might be looking for a job as an actor, but they're already casted. But guess what? They are looking for a cleaner, somebody to clean the sets, okay? The closer you are to the system, the easier it is for you to get in. So sometimes uh, some, people have gotten in, uh, some people have gotten to their dream by using ordinary jobs. And this is popular even in Hollywood. Even in Hollywood, all these big stars, you see them, Richard Carey, who's this, um, Tom Cruise. You look at all these big stars. When you hear their story, is they did not just land straight into, uh, into Hollywood. Some of them took jobs as, 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 as dishwashers in restaurants, restaurants around Hollywood. But while doing that non-film job, they are able to meet film producers. They are able to meet somebody who will connect them to the opportunity that they are looking for. And bringing it local, I'm going to give you an example of something that I witnessed. Uh, the, time, uh, the, time I, uh, the time we were doing um, Zuba season one, we had um, a guy who is an editor. He was an editor, and the time he came, oh, he applied for the editing job, but we had already crewed somebody else to, to do that job. And then the next advertisement that we put out was a driver's job. He can drive. He applied for the driver's job, even though that was not what he wanted. So he came on set as a driver, but because he was on set as a driver, he was able to interact with me and to show me the things that he could do. So I saw his work, I saw his work, I was impressed. And I spoke to the producer that in case there's a gap, uh, actually we had a gap where, uh, I said in case we have a gap for editing, we also have this guy who drives us, who drives the crew, he can do this. And he was able to counter check the guy's, like, the, guy's, um, the guy's work. And guess what? Today he is the head editor for the same show as Uber. But that's how he got in. He got in as a driver, and today he is exactly where he wanted to go. So don't shy away from taking um, jobs that uh, have nothing to do with you. I've done that before myself, where I got crewed as a, what do you call it? Uh, I was actually, they called me what? A tea girl. Okay, no, a water girl, actually, on set, on an international film, where I was a water girl. And practically my job was to carry water to take water to the crew, to take water to the cast, to take what, but that's not what I wanted. But it was just the fact that I am working on a film set. Within that project, being a water girl on that project, I was able to learn multiple skills because I was moving from department to department. Skills development was happening while I'm a water girl on set. And then um, somewhere in the middle of the project, the producer fell out with... Um, a crew member, the, the person who was doing a wardrobe and, uh, and, 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 um, and makeup. And guess what? I jumped into the opportunity. They tested me on one day and they got me. Why did they get me? Because I was already aware for them. It was cost effective because I was a person who was already aware of the story. I was already aware of the story. I was already, I, I was already part of the project. It was easier to work with me than to start recruiting somebody else to come and take the job. And that went down on my CV, okay? But initially, what got me the job was, I went there as a water girl. So sometimes, take up even jobs that are not within, uh, within the job that you're looking for, but as long as it is connecting you to the mainstream of what you're looking for, as long as it is connecting you to the, um, to the platform, where you want your skills to be recognized or for your talent to be identified. I hope, uh, I hope the information I've shared helps. And I hope now uh, you know where to start from to search for those 
opportunities in the film industry that you're looking for. I don't know whether it's entrepreneurial, inter, uh, entrepreneurial opportunities you're looking for or skills development or employment um, opportunities. I hope this information helps you. And thank you for watching.